an iMac and a MacBook. It may seem like a weird comparison, but especially now, these two devices are actually being cross-shopped more than you might think. With more and more people working or studying from home, perhaps indefinitely, it's seeming more and more likely that some people could pick an iMac over a MacBook now that they don't need as much portability. So in today's video, we're going to compare and contrast the benefits of each of these two form factors and price points to see which one is the best for you. All right, I'm gonna start this video with the one and only disclaimer. Both of these products are at risk of becoming outdated in the near future by significantly more powerful and redesigned Apple Silicon Macs. I do not know when. That being said, if you don't care about Apple Silicon or you prefer Intel or you need a device right now, both of these are still great options. So by no means should you completely avoid all Macs until they are replaced by Apple Silicon. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the comparison. All right, so we'll start this video out with perhaps the coldest take ever in all of modern history. Desktops offer better performance at a lower cost than laptops. What? What? Huh? What? Ah! Yeah, it's crazy, right? In all seriousness though, Apple has this mentality of essentially pay to play. As you move up their product segments, you usually have to pay more to step up to a new product category, even if you're not necessarily getting more performance. Case in point, iMac Pro is gonna perform better than a base model Mac Pro, but the Mac Pro is more expensive. So you'd think that under the conventional wisdom, moving from a 16 inch MacBook Pro to a 5K iMac would come with less performance or a greater cost. But actually it's neither of those. There's more performance and a lower cost. Now obviously there's more to any Mac than just a box full of computer parts, but let's start this comparison by talking about performance. It can be a little tricky to directly compare the pricing and specs for an iMac and a MacBook Pro, but if we take a look at a base model 16 inch MacBook, for $2,400 we get a 6 core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and Radeon Pro 5300M graphics. A comparable iMac would be the mid-tier model, which has a 6 core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and Radeon Pro 5300 graphics for $2,000 plus another 40 bucks or so to bring our RAM up to 16 gigabytes. So in general, comparing spec for spec, you'd save about $350 by going for an iMac instead of a MacBook Pro if you standardize for RAM and storage. But today we're going to step up our performance comparisons and compare my base model iMac with my much more expensive loaded 16 inch MacBook Pro. Here are the specs of both. The iMac has the base model Core i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and Radeon Pro 5300 at a cost of $1,800. The MacBook Pro has the 2.3 gigahertz Core i9, upgraded 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and Radeon Pro 5500M with the upgraded eight gigabytes of VRAM for a total cost of $3,300. Obviously the MacBook has four times the RAM and storage, so if we standardize that, what we would go for is the mid-tier iMac, add $200 for the one terabyte SSD option, and then we'd pick up 32 gigabytes of RAM for about $130, bringing the total cost to roughly $2,330. That's nearly $1,000 less expensive than the MacBook. And the thing is for that thousand dollars, you're not losing out on any performance. My base model iMac still matches or outperforms this $3,300 MacBook. In Cinebench R20, the six core i5 makes up for its two core deficit compared to the eight core i9 in the MacBook Pro thanks to extra power and cooling capacity. It's also worth noting that at full tilt, the iMac is a lot more quiet than the MacBook Pro due to the fact that it has a single cooling fan that's larger, so therefore spins at a lower RPM and exhausts behind the display. Take a listen. Moving on to graphics, it might seem like these devices would be evenly matched, 5300 versus 5500M. 
but the iMac actually performs noticeably better. In Unigen Heaven on the Extreme preset, it scores about 13% higher than the 5500M and 24% higher than the 5300M. Both of these performance figures translate into Final Cut Pro, with the 16-inch MacBook rendering a 10-minute 4K H.264 video in 9 minutes and 3 seconds, with the iMac accomplishing the task in 7 minutes and 57 seconds. The MacBook exported that same video in 1 minute 23 seconds, and the iMac took 1 minute and 2 seconds. One area where I can't get a direct performance comparison is the SSD speeds. My base model has the 256 gigabyte option and it's not a particularly fast drive. Write speeds are about 700 megabytes per second and read is about 1300. So pretty standard, but not ridiculously fast. Now Apple advertises up to 3.4 gigabytes per second on their eight terabyte capacity. So we have to assume that as you step it up to the one, two, four and eight terabyte capacities, you will get faster drives. But on the base model, not only are you getting less storage, you're also getting a slower drive. I think it says a lot that you can compare an 18 $100 iMac to a $3,300 MacBook or a $2,300 iMac if you standardize for RAM and storage, but it gets even more interesting if we standardize for price instead of for specs. If you spec out an iMac with a $3,300 budget, you can go for the 8-core i7, Radeon Pro 5700 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, one terabyte SSD, and add 64 gigabytes of RAM for a total of $3,267. That would absolutely demolish even the fanciest 16-inch MacBook Pro. But as we all know, there's more to the story than just raw performance numbers. So let's talk holistically about these two devices. First off, the most noticeable one, in my opinion, is the display. It's something that you're going to be interacting with 100% of the time when you're using each of these machines. And it's hard really to argue with a 27-inch 5K display. 500 nits peak brightness, P3 color gamut. This is a fantastic display, and it adds a lot of value to the iMac. A lot of people really miss out on that when they look at a spec sheet and they see, what, it's almost $2,000 and you're getting eight gigabytes of RAM, and yeah, that's, you know, it's not great, but you have to factor in the 5K display because this is no ordinary panel. And obviously, while it's smaller, the 16-inch MacBook Pro packs a really fantastic display as well. It's 3072 by 1920. It has the same 500 nit peak brightness and P3 color gamut. It's, it's a really great laptop display. And I know that there's going to be some people who say, oh, you can get 15-inch laptops with a 4K display panel, but I really don't think you need that. The pixel density isn't necessary on a 15 inch panel. Also improved this year are the speakers in the iMac. iMacs have always had pretty decent speakers, but this year they're really outstanding. Now don't get me wrong, the 16 inch MacBook Pro has I think the best speakers of any laptop you can buy. They are amazing and they pretty much negate the need to bring around a Bluetooth speaker if you have this, they're really that good. But obviously, the iMac has a lot more internal volume, so you can have larger speaker drivers, larger subwoofers. They're better and louder, obviously. Equally undeniable is that the iMac has a better webcam. It's 1080p, it's enhanced by the image signal processor, so the clarity, color balance, and skin tones are a lot better than the MacBook Pro. The webcam just can't keep up here. It's 720p, it looks really fuzzy and soft. It's just not anywhere near as good. Now, as far as the microphones, Apple claims the iMac now has a three mic array, sort of implying that it's similar to the one that's put in the MacBook Pro, but to my ear, the MacBook sounds way, way better. That could just be due to the fact that you're further away from the mics on the iMac, but I don't know, it sounds a lot worse than the MacBook Pro. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. There's another crucial thing the iMac offers, and that's expandability. The benefit of this eight-year-old design is that Apple hasn't had time yet to do away with the upgradable RAM door. This is almost certainly not going to stick around on Apple Silicon, so take advantage of that while you can. Apple charges $400 to upgrade from 16 to 32 gigabytes on the MacBook Pro, but you can get 32 gigs in an iMac for a little bit over 100 bucks these days. And they support up to 128 gigabytes total, so there's no need to worry about running out of RAM anytime soon. There are, however, some areas where the MacBook is undeniably the better choice, though. 
I mean, the obvious answer is that if you need portability, that completely rules out the iMac. Even if you're confined to your house for the time being, you might have a small desk, or maybe you want to move from room to room, or watch a movie in bed from time to time. So there's no getting around the portability of a laptop, and the 16 inch is really powerful for its size. It's about the same size as the Retina MacBooks of yore, but it packs eight cores, better cooling, and much more powerful graphics. What I absolutely love about the 16 inch MacBook Pro is it strikes a balance between getting a lot of powerful components crammed into a laptop, but also not sacrificing just having a nice, well-built, thin and light laptop. There are plenty of workstations out there that offer better performance and frankly less cost than this MacBook Pro. But this form factor is a large part of what you're buying. Really good build quality, great keyboard, great trackpad, great display, great speakers. The overall package is hard to argue with. That being said, a 16 inch MacBook Pro is still a large laptop and it isn't as portable as an iPad Pro or a MacBook Air. That could be really important. I mean, here's something that's worth keeping in mind. Let's say you have a 13 inch MacBook Pro or MacBook Air and you're going to sell it and then take the money that you get from selling that computer and apply that to offset the cost of a MacBook Pro. Well, given that the iMac is 300 to $1,000 less than a comparably specced MacBook Pro, you might be able to afford to buy this as a workstation device that sits on your desk and then keep your laptop as a secondary device when you need something more portable. That's definitely something I think a lot of people should keep in mind given that we're working remotely, a lot of us are staying home. Maybe you don't need the portability of a laptop as much as you did. Now obviously if you're in a position where once things start to go back to normal, portability is gonna be really, really important for you, the 16 inch is really hard to argue with in terms of a really great overall package. Now obviously if you clicked on this video looking for a definitive answer like, hey you, Steve, you need to buy an iMac, well, maybe if you're Steve, then you have your answer now, but for most people, there's no one obvious choice. It depends on what you need to do with a device. If you need a large display for Photoshop work, iMac, great idea. If you don't have space for a desktop or you need to move your work around, a MacBook Pro is a great option. So no one can really give a definitive answer except you, but hopefully this video helped you get there. So if it did, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani and check out my subreddit, which is linked in the description below. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.